This presentation applies ideas about redox reactions to reactions involving halogens and halide ions. By the end of the presentation, you should be able to say whether or not a particular combination of halogen and halide ion will undergo a redox reaction together. And you should be able to explain your reasoning in terms of the oxidizing ability of the halogens and the trend for this ability in their group of the periodic table. You should be able to write balanced equations for where a reaction does occur. You should be able to write half equations and describe these as oxidation or reduction as appropriate. You also need to be able to talk about the oxidation of halide ions in electrolysis and give the half equation for what occurs at the positive electrode. With all of these reactions, you also ought to be able to link what's going on together with what you already know about the appearance of halogens and their solutions and so on, and make predictions about the observations that you would see. Halide ions are halogen atoms that have gained an extra electron, taking them from seven electrons in the outer shell up to the stable eight and giving them a one minus charge. They can also lose this electron to go back to seven electrons in the outer shell of a halogen atom. This, sets, this gives us the possibility of a competition for electrons between halogen atoms and halide ions. Now who wins that competition depends on something called oxidizing ability. And within group 7 there is a trend in this oxidizing ability. At the top of the group, fluorine is the most oxidizing of the halogen elements. What does that actually mean? Well, it means that it has the strongest ability to take electrons away from other things. In other words, it's a very powerful oxidizing agent. Going down to the bottom of the group, iodine is the least oxidizing of the halogen elements. This means it's only a weak oxidizing agent. So the trend within group 7 that you need to know is that the elements become more oxidizing as you go up the group, with fluorine being the most oxidizing of the elements. And that this idea of being oxidizing refers to their ability to take electrons away from other things. Let's look at this idea of oxidizing ability in the context of a reaction between halogen and halide ion. We'll take the example of chlorine, the halogen, reacting with iodide ions, an example of a halide ion. Now, from what we've said before about the trend, you should know which one of those two halogens is more oxidizing, chlorine or iodine. And the answer is that it's the chlorine that's more oxidizing because it's higher up the group. Iodine is a less oxidizing element. It's lower down group 7. So what does that mean in terms of this reaction? It means that the chlorine, being more oxidizing, can oxidize, take electrons from the iodide ions. And the iodide ions, being from the less oxidizing element, can be oxidized by the chlorine. So the chlorine has a stronger ability to take electrons away. Iodine has a weaker ability. So in this competition, chlorine wins and can steal that eighth electron from the iodide ions, taking it for its own atoms to make chloride ions. So chlorine, Cl2, each atom gains an electron uh, to give two chloride ions. On the other hand, the iodide ions, losing the battle, poor things, uh, each iodide ion loses an electron to go back to just being iodine atoms uh, as the I2 molecule and so loss of two electrons. And we can put that together as an overall reaction showing that chlorine 1Cl2 will react with two iodide ions to give us two chloride ions and iodine I2. So this is a direct competition for electrons with the chlorine being more oxidized, oxidizing, winning the battle and taking those iodide ions, electrons, away from them to make chloride ions and leave the element iodine. To recap then, we've said that a more oxidizing halogen, in other words one higher up group 7, can react with and oxidize the ion of a less oxidizing halogen. So we ought to be able to predict then for any, for any combination of a halogen reacting with a halide ion whether or not 
we would expect a redox reaction to occur. So have a look at this table. It shows a whole uh, range of possible reactions, different halogens down the left reacting with different halide compounds across the top. They're the sodium halide compounds, really doesn't matter what the metal is, uh, that's just a spectator ion. It's the, it's the halide ion that would be potentially being oxidized by the halogen. So pause the video and decide for each of these sodium halide compounds, can the halide ion be oxidized by the halogen that it's reacting with? Well, some answers. Let's look at the sodium fluoride reactions first. So we've got fluoride ions. Will there be a redox reaction with any of the halogens? Will the fluoride ions be oxidized? No. And the reason for this, of course, is that fluorine is the most oxidizing halogen. And so nothing, uh, none of the other halogens can oxidize fluoride ions. What about sodium chloride with its chloride ions? Well, there's one possible reaction here. Fluorine being more oxidizing than chlorine, can oxidize chloride ions, take an electron away from the chloride ion, give it to a fluorine atom to make fluoride ion. Sodium bromide with the bromide ions, two reactions possible now. Both fluorine and chlorine are more oxidizing than bromine because they're higher up in group 7. So they can both oxidize bromide ions. They turn them into bromine. Finally, the sodium iodide with its iodide ions here we've got three possible reactions. Fluorine, chlorine and bromine are all more oxidizing than iodine and so they can oxidize iodide ions. Here's an opportunity then for you to put into practice this oxidizing ability idea for the halogens and also bring it together with what you've already learned about redox reactions, writing half equations and so on. I've given you two possible combinations, bromine reacting with lithium fluoride or chlorine reacting with lithium iodide. Only one of those two combinations will undergo a redox reaction. Which one is it? Explain your reasoning, give a full balanced equation for the reaction, and then write the half equations as well, and decide which one represents oxidation and which one represents reduction, explaining your reasoning. Hopefully you picked out the right hand combination. The chlorine is more oxidizing than iodine, and so it can oxidize iodide ions. On the other hand, bromine is less oxidizing than fluorine, so it can't oxidize fluoride ions. The balanced equation for the reaction will look like this, and if we split that into half equations, we get these two. As well as being able to say whether or not a redox reaction will occur between a halogen and a halide and give half equations, we can also be called upon to describe what's going on in the reaction uh, in terms of observations. So here's a scenario. Imagine you've got bromine aqueous solution and you're going to add it to potassium iodide solution. See what happens and then shake with cyclohexane. Now, there will be a redox reaction in this case. So have a think from what you've learned before about the appearance of the halogens in solution in water and in cyclohexane. What would you expect to see first after just mixing the bromine solution with the potassium iodide and then after shaking with the cyclohexane? Pause the video and have a think. Well, initially, we'd expect to see brown colour appearing in the potassium iodide solution because the iodide ions will be being oxidised to iodine. The orange colour from the bromine solution that we're adding should disappear because the bromine will be uh, being reduced to bromide ions and bromide ions in solution are colourless, as with all the halide ions. After adding the cyclohexane, we'll expect to see two layers now. Upper layer will be cyclohexane, lower layer will be water. And so since we've produced iodine, we'll expect the upper layer to be purple and the lower layer, well, you could have said um, yellow, orange, or brown, because iodine in solution in water can be any one of those colours. Um, but it'd probably be at the yellow end, because most of the iodine will have gone into the cyclohexane, where it's more soluble. 
As well as describing the redox reaction in terms of observations, we can also be asked to describe it in terms of the redox behaviour that's going on. And this means talking very specifically about what is happening to each of our reactants. For the bromine, what is it doing? Well, it's oxidising the iodide ions to iodine. So note here how we're being very careful to name things properly. At the beginning of the reaction, in the potassium iodide, we've got iodide ions. At the end, after they've been oxidised, we'll have iodine. Likewise, we can talk about the iodide ions and say that they're reducing the bromine, as it is at the start, to bromide ions. You'll need to be very uh, careful and conscious when you're writing these, explanate these descriptions, to make sure that you are technical and correct with your language and that you name things uh, exactly as they should be named. We can also be called on to explain what we've asserted that the halogens higher up in group 7 are more oxidizing than the halogens lower down in group 7. So for instance take this question, why is chlorine more oxidizing than bromine? So far all we've said is just because chlorine is higher up in group 7. Let's actually go through step by step then an explanation for this. So we've said chlorine is higher up in group 7, so what? Well, that means it'll have less shells of electrons, and that means that its outer shell will be closer to the nucleus. Nucleus is positive and the electrons are negative, opposite charges attract. So there'll be greater attraction for electrons in the outer shell of chlorine than there will in that for that of bromine. We'll turn our attention now from reacting halide ions with halogens to a different way of oxidizing halide ions, and that's using electrolysis. In electrolysis, we're effectively using electricity to pull electrons off the halide ions and oxidize them in order to get halogen elements. This is done on a huge scale with sodium chloride solution. Sodium chloride solution is known as brine, so you see that brine is going into uh, this process. And what, what we get is chlorine gas being produced at the positive electrode and we also get hydrogen gas at the negative electrode and then passing out the other end of the cell we've produced sodium hydroxide. All three of those things, chlorine, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide, are very useful. And so this is an industrial process that's carried out on an enormous scale. We do need to be able to describe what actually goes on in redox terms when you'd carry out the electrolysis of a solution containing halide ions. And the most important feature of this uh, for your AS understanding is what happens at the positive electrode. For it's here that the halide ions are attracted. Halide ions are negative, right? Chloride ions, Cl minus, Br bromide ions, Br minus, and so on. So they're attracted to the positive electrode. And when they get there, they're oxidized. And so we can write a typical half equation. So for chloride ions, we're doing exactly the same as if we had reacted it with a more reactive halogen. We're pulling off electrons, oxidizing the chloride ions, in this case, to get the element chlorine. And that's therefore a loss of electrons. And that could be equally done with iodide ions, oxidizing them to iodine. So just note here, there's, there's no difference in the half equation when you're oxidizing a halide ion. It doesn't matter how you're doing it, by using a, a more oxidizing halogen or using electricity and electrolysis you get the same uh, process occurring in redox terms. Now the negative electrode, uh, we actually get a process involving water. And I'll show you what it is, uh, so you can see where the hydrogen comes from. Uh, but the, uh, the oxidation of the halide ion is the thing that's most significant for you in terms of what's going on in the electrolysis. So a final question for you to think about, bringing together again your redox understanding of this process and also your knowledge of appearance of halogens. If you had a solution of potassium bromide and you electrolyzed it, what would you see at the positive electrode? What would you expect to see? Explain your reasoning and give a half equation. Well, hopefully you've suggested you'd see an orange colour, uh, and that's due to the bromide ions in the, bro in the potassium bromide solution being oxidised to bromine at the positive electrode. You could have said a yellow colour as well, 
uh, because a, a more dilute solution of bromine in water has a, a yellow colour. And the half equation would look like this.